The galaxy lies open before you. A galaxy of billions of stars. With the captive planets. But don't be awed by its dimensions. Look instead at the trillions of lives and souls within it. Souls known and unknown. Some loved, some hated, some feared. This galaxy is an expanse of trillions of destinies, of desires. It's a galaxy of tales, stunning treacheries, heartbreaking failures, and glorious triumphs. These are the stories of this galaxy, and they are yours to tell. Yes, they say the galaxy was once ruled by the Endless, whose countless ruins and remains are both precious and lethal. Dust, an essence as old as time. They say it is power and wealth and even magic, the stuff of stories, indeed. But what do you say? From the frigid vacuum of interstellar voids to the steaming jungles of fertile planets, from the horrors of ancient crypts to the wonder of gleaming space stations, it is a galaxy that burst with legends to be recounted, secrets to be disclosed, truth to be revealed. The stories are endless. All it lacks is you, the voice that will tell them. Hello and welcome everyone to the stream. My name is Jordan and we are Amplitude Studios. Um, and welcome to Endless D&D. &D. I'm very excited to be here today, and I hope you all are as excited as I am because, uh, well, let's just say it's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, without further ado, I want to just get right into it, and I want to introduce um, everybody that we have here today. Um, I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves. For those of you that don't know me, I'll start off. Um, I'm Jordan. And uh, I'm a streamer who recently started working at Amplitude Studios uh, a couple months ago now. And uh, I just, I really love streaming. I really love uh, working at Amplitude and I really love the Endless Universe. And so uh, I had the idea to start this Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Granted, I've never participated in one, nor have I been the dungeon master before, but I am doing the crazy thing of doing both at the same time, and so <laughs> wish me luck, I'm gonna need it. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's me. Um, I'll pass it off to Hervé up there, and uh, we'll get started. So, uh, hello everybody, I am Hervé, uh, one of uh, the, the, I am an associate producer on a, an announced project in Amplitude Studio, and uh, I joined uh, the, the studio uh, the same day as Jordan, if, uh, if I'm good. And uh, as an associate producer, uh, my job is to be uh, like a project manager, and I am in charge of all the graphics of uh, and FX and uh, sound design, uh, everything artistic in uh, the, our next uh, project. Awesome. Cool. Adrian, will you take it next? Sure. So, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Adrian. I'm an AI programmer at the current uh, Humankind Life uh, service. Uh, I joined quite a few after, few weeks after Jordan, I think. It was like uh, I joined the 27th of September or something I like. So far, the studio is awesome and I can't wait to see how the new projects go on. And I'm really looking forward to this new D&D experience. Heck yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Adrian. All right, Isabel, you take the next. So apologize. I'm coughing up quite a lot this evening. Uh, I'm Isabel. I'm the oldest here. Uh, I mean, in amplitude years. Uh, I've been here for a few years. I don't remember, so excuse me about that. I started working on uh, Endless Space 2, 
and then I switched to humankind. I'm currently working on humankind. Oh, and I'm a game designer, by the way. Cool. Lauren? Uh, I'm Lauren. Uh, some of you know me as Psychana. I'm the QA lead at Amplitude. Uh, I've kind of, my situation for when I start is complicated because I was in the US and there were some shenanigans. I've been working with Amplitude for all, for a year and eight months now, um, but less than that actually here at the studio. And sometimes you may see some, something moving around. There may be a black cat walking around. That's Akko. He may or may not choose to come hang out. So uh, I promise nothing. I hope that cat comes and sits on your lap. <laughs> he probably will. We need, we need a mascot. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, take it. Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Most of you probably already know me, even if it's been a while since you've seen me without a mask, because, you know, at the studio, we uh, still respect all the um, lockdown and uh, what's the word? Uh, not, not, not sanity. Um, health safety, rules. Safety procedures. I don't know. Yeah, the, the safety procedures. And yeah, I've been here at Amplitude for uh, a year and a month, roughly, which I think is just a little less than than Isabel, uh, I think, because I remember you still being in your uh, probation period when I joined, so probably three and a half years for you. Yep. And yeah, I'm community manager here. I'm you know one of the people who read the forums and take your feedback to producers and designers, etc., so that hopefully uh, we can act on it. Um, and uh, on the other hand, bring the news from the production team to all of you. And uh, join Jordan on stream when I can. Heck yeah. The bridge between the community and the company. I love it. Cool. Yeah, uh, small note about that. I actually got out of my probation period today. So I'm an official Amplitudeite. <laughs> Is that what we're called, I think? Amplitude? Amplitude. Cool. <laughs> um, but anyways, so I'm super excited about that. That means I actually get to move out of this apartment. <laughs> get a bigger one. Um, anyways, uh, well, yeah, so that's, that's everybody that we have here. As you can kind of see, I guess, down over here to the right from me, uh, is the little thumbnails I made about what races, uh, our characters are. And so, um, I guess, uh, I guess go, let's go from left to right. Uh, we have, I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, Isabel Bike, Bike. <laughs> I've already, I've already messed it up. Bieke. Bieke. Okay, Bieke. Um, that's Isabel, and she is a Sofan. Um, and then we have Lauren, who is playing Rith. Uh, my Sofan is not a she. Oh, they, it's a they. they. Yes, I, we're, I'm going to be doing my best to just go with they for everybody. Um, and just kind of like play it safe. But uh, if I mess up, of course, forgive me. Um, I will be doing my very best. Um, so anyways, Rith is a craver. Um, so Lauren is going to be a craver. <laughs> um, and then Stephanie is going to be Rabia. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Rabia? Rabia. Rabia. Got it. And uh, she is a pilgrim. Very cool. Um, and then we have Hervé, who is playing Alabraxar, who is an unfallen um one of the tree people um which is super cool and then last but not least we have adrian who's playing an automaton named zero v1 to which i'm gonna maybe call you Vito or vido is that yeah cool? kind of yeah cool <laughs> maybe that'll be uh, a little bit easier um but anyway just be glad it's not a, not a harmony because they have names like copper sulfate ponders yeah yeah, honestly, the names are not as, not a, as hard as they could be, so. <clears throat> okay, let's get started. <clears throat> so, I want to set the background here. The five adventurers that you see before you um, were all chosen due to their set of skills, their proficiencies, maybe even their personality. Their as a company and none of you know the name of this company but you were approached by various individuals um, who let you know that this company is recruiting 
members to join in an exploration party. And this exploration party is going to be going down to a remote planet on the edge of the galaxy named Sahar. And on this planet, it is rumored that there is ancient ruins and perhaps treasures of the endless to be found. The company is very interested in said treasures and said uh, wealth untold that could be found on this planet. And it is up to you five to search for a reason, um, evidence that uh, the company can use um, to essentially send further expeditions down to this planet. And so we find our five travelers on a spaceship um, heading down to the planet of Sahar. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice spaceship. It's a cruiser. And, uh, and you all are strapped in to your, your flight seats. And the ship is coming in to the planet. And as the ship lands, you each take a look at each other. You think about where you've been in your life, but you also think about what could be coming and what adventures um, might, might be in store for you on the planet. And, uh, and so as you're sitting there, you start unstrapping and the, uh, the door of the ship, the back door of the ship starts descending down. And essentially your, your mission um, on this planet you have six weeks to find this evidence, find some reason um, for the company to come there. Uh, and they're essentially going to fly off after this and they're gonna leave you there for six weeks. So you guys are gonna be on your own um, on Sahar and you need to survive, thrive, um, and kind of the rest is up to you. So I'd like to start off um, by leaving a decision up to you. Um, as the ship lands and as the door opens, you can either immediately get off the ship or you can linger on. Um, who is going to be getting off the ship immediately? I will. There okay. is no way I'm staying sat over here a minute longer. All right, sounds good. E um, eager to, to uh, get started, I guess. Yeah. Um... I would probably also head off the ship because this whole deal of hey go to this planet and figure out if there's stuff worth sending a bigger uh, expedition for is kind of has always been her job with the pilgrims so this is something she's used to all right and you other three i will also follow along off the ship i will follow by at the back i'm uh, behind everybody uh, i think you're gonna but... get a little bump on your shoulder it's a small flying orb. My little AI that you've seen around the ship that tries to push you again and again and again. Uh, it can't really push you. It's just a little flying thing, but she's super excited about getting out. Cool. And yeah, uh, I'm trying I, 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 I will follow to protect them if necessary. All right. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, it's probably going to take Rabia uh, maybe a bit longer than the rest to leave the ship because she actually has a big uh, you know, metal chest with a lot of supplies in it. She brought like three weeks worth of rations because as I say, this is not her first rodeo for this kind of thing. She's pretty prepared. Didn't quite bring six weeks because hopefully that won't be necessary, but. Perfect. All right. Well, everybody's getting off the ship. And as you take your bags and your belongings with you, um, you step out onto what looks like a rather nice um, launch pad, a starport launch pad. And, uh, and there are people bustling around. Um, and you notice one person in particular. Um, and this is where I'm going to need my, my notes. Forgive me, this is my first time doing this. Um, but uh, you see a man named Riley. And he's dressed kind of shabbily. He has a uniform on that you recognize to be a United Empire uniform. And he is kind of 
not doing very much. He's kind of bustling around, almost like he's trying to act busy. Like he doesn't have anything to do, but he wants people to think that he's doing something. And uh, and as he knows, notices you get off the ship, he he comes over and and uh, approaches your group. And he says, "Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Sahar. If you need anything, I am Riley. Yes, Isabel. Or sorry. Yes, Bieke. Oh, what's your name? Excuse me." <clears throat> Oh, uh, I'm Bieke, and then I'm pointing to the little orb, and this is little one. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome to Zahar. Um, like I said, my name is Riley, and, uh, if you, if you need anything, please come to me. I'm, uh, I'm kind of in charge here, uh, actually. <clears throat> I run things around the starport, and, uh, and so, uh, if you see anything suspicious, let me know. I have questions. Uh, do you know anything about, uh, air pressure? or uh, oxygen or amount or anything that could change uh, physical properties of specific um, maybe explosive reactions that I should know of? Um, I'm not sure who would be able to answer that question around here. We're, we're pretty uh, down to earth kind of simple folk um, around here, but um, if anybody would know anything, it would probably be the mayor. Uh, so you might want to go talk to him. Cannot Just going to say, while Riley is giving us his whole spiel of, you know, if we need anything, uh, and he's in charge around here, Rabia is just silently glaring at him, and, you know, when he says, oh, come to me for help, she mutters a, like, fat chance under her breath, but when Isabel, or when Bayake starts talking about blowing stuff up, she cracks a smirk, because you can't tell, she's not on good terms. With the united empire okay <clears throat> well anyways um town is that way so if you're ready to go um we already have your lodgings prepared and ready for you um your employers have furnished you some rather nice um accommodations uh, so if you follow that path in about 10 or so minutes you'll actually arrive at uh, at the town um, of dundon uh, so, what would you all like to do? Before we leave Riley, uh, Rith will look at them and just ask, will there be food? Um, I assume that the accommodations will be to your liking. Um, I'm not sure of the specifics. You can you can find out when you arrive. I have, I have things to attend to here. And he kind of shuffles off as he's trying to look busy again. How far away are the accommodations? Um, 10 to 15 minute walk. You're just outside of the city. Um, I should actually make the map available to be seen by you all now. Uh, if, if it's 10 to 15 minute walk, um, I will start looking around if I can get any kind of cart or something to help with the big metal chest full of supplies. And that failing would probably bother uh, the giant muscle mount craver to help carry in. <laughs> Ruth, are you gonna help uh, help carry the luggage? Uh, it, it would stare for a moment, and then yes, it would. Help. Yeah, and you know, if if I'm taking from that the implication that no, I'm not finding any any kind of cart to help with that. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I would probably you know um, walk over to to Ruth. Um, probably know each other's names and little else since we've all been hired individually and uh, just, you know, look up at him, uh, maybe cock an eyebrow and be like, yeah, to lend me a hand or two there, big guy. It, it would, yeah, it would go to pick up the, the crate. You can assume uh, Bieke would try to lift something, but like one pen out of your whole mess. But at least they are helping. Sweet. All right. Well, you all start making your way towards the city of Dundon. And as you're walking along a dusty path, you begin to see the outline of the city come into focus. It's uh, it's morning time and you've arrived uh, just as the sun is rising on what looks like a relatively primitive town. You 
each come from your various backgrounds where you've been accustomed to different uh, styles of living. But uh, the town of Dundon looks rather small and dusty. And uh, you can see around the outside of the city, um, they've erected um, rather crude walls made of mud, sticks, stones, basically anything that they could get their hands on. You see some uh, farms, some, some plots of farming kind of off to the side, a little bit outside of the city limits. And uh, you can see the tops of roofs uh, peeking over the top of this outer wall of the city. And, uh, and as you're walking along, um, would you like to say anything to each other? Because this is your first time that you've kind of spent any time with um, each other. Um, and uh, and I, I think some of you may know each other. Um, um, but yeah, would anybody like to, to talk to each other, to get to know each other a little bit? Well, hey, Wraith, um, I, I know I'm super tall and old, but you're even taller than me. Um, like three times, I guess. Uh, c can you see if there is a lab? I mean, it's a city, right? There must be a lab somewhere. I don't know how advanced this city will be, but if I spot one, I will let you know. Oh, but I mean, if there is no lab, is it a city? I'm going to, you know, walking near them, cut in at that point, and say like, Look at the walls. This is quality imperial colony funding. You'll oh. be lucky if you find as much as a Petri dish here. Oh. So it's not a city. Yeah, it's... I wouldn't be surprised if we find a very luxuriously appointed palace for the governor while everybody else lives in mud hovels. But don't necessarily expect this to be a center of research. But what would be the point then? Money, I'm afraid. Ah, useless stuff. So, Vito, the automaton, how are you? How are you walking? Uh, you're an automaton, um, so you're a machine in nature. What does you, what does your uh, person look like? as they walk towards the city. So Vito is kind of uh, roaming around the group. It's not actually within the three people, four people group that uh, descended from the airship. It's uh, just like keeping distances as he looks kind of um, distracted, confused by everything he looks around. And at one point he decides when we reach almost the city to approach the day, so Pieke, and his day little automaton to ask them a question. So it's kind of like, hey, I I'm sorry, I but c could you explain me what's what's that tree that's moving in behind in front of us? I've never seen one of those. Oh, uh, don't worry, it's it's fun. I mean, if you bring a grenade close to it, just wait to see how it moves. You have no idea how fast it can run. Ooh, as as good. she says that, uh, I will slowly but very firmly put a hand on her shoulder, uh, on their shoulder, and glare down at them. I drop whatever I was getting from my pack. <laughs> please, please don't try and blow up anyone we're working with. Yeah, we're not working save, yet. Save the explosions for the other guys. The other. You know, I, I am a tree, but uh, fire is a part of us. Uh, I don't uh, fear fire. It's not a problem for me about explosions. Oh, I and, like you. And Vido, if you want, you can ask me directly why I am a big tree walking behind you. You're in front of me, but you're also behind me? No, in front of you, sorry. <laughs> you're too small, I can't see you. I don't know if you're in front of me or behind me. 
But yeah, after this, Vito uh, looks like more relaxed and tries to be closer to the group, even if still a bit uh, restless. Uh, there is little one, so the little orb, the little AI, uh, hovering around you, trying to like lift your spirits. <clears throat> um. All right. So as you're walking, um, could uh, I think I think the the people back home would probably appreciate a little bit maybe more of uh, the backstory. I think we also haven't gone over uh, what classes everybody is yet. I'm realizing that we didn't really touch on that. Um, so maybe we can go around back the other way and uh, we will start with Rabia and we'll just kind of... Yeah, Rabia, as we mentioned, Rabia is a, is a pilgrim, but she was born on an imperial world and joined the pilgrims relatively young in, in her late teens, which is probably the reason why she's not on good terms with the United Empire, because she grew up in a place kind of like this, where the governor was living the good life and oppressing the people for his own benefit. And um, generally, a pretty restless soul, so she was quite happy to join a group of semi-nomadic people and be told, hey, go to this new planet you've never been and look for interesting stuff. So um, she's got a lot of experience with this kind of uh, of mission, and which is also why she came with everything but the kitchen sink, basically. Uh, duct tape, climbing gear, whatever we need, I probably have it in that trunk. <laughs> Seems like a very useful person to have around. Uh, yeah, uh, right. And as for the, the uh, class, um, it's a rogue, mostly so that I can have... A billion and one skills. I think I have I have proficiency in like ten different skills. So the the resident skill monkey here, and probably the the only person here who doesn't have weird abilities. <laughs> cool. Rith, could you tell us about your craver? Yeah. So uh, Rith is just a very very big craver who uh, left the hive, and once it was removed it uh found the other uh other species around fascinating and began studying them um which why it wants to doesn't really want to share but it, it finds them all interesting and that led it to uh learning more about uh biology and becoming a, uh, a medic. So, uh, Rith is, uh, a, a cleric. Very cool. Friendly giant. Just wants a hug. I'll give so many hugs. I got so many arms for hugs. Perfect. And you, Bieke? So, Bieke is a Sofan, and even by Sofan measures, they're exceptionally uh, skilled to make things explode. Like, anything. Everything. They just love it. I have one important question, Isabel. Were you the one who picked out that specific Sofan, or was it uh, Jordan, and by chance just happened to find the best one to pick for this? I, I'm guilty there. I I added all the thumbnails and I was just like, this one almost looks like it has like a smoke grenade or something. It, I, I think it's actually a spray can because that's yeah. a, you know, the delinquent youths kind of event from ES2. So I was going to say, I think it's from This is like the, the teenage rebel of the Sofons. It's, it's yeah. But it, it works for BAK, clearly. Uh, if you're looking for someone who's uh, measured, who thinks before acting, who can who you can depend on uh just look the other way it's not be uh, okay. <laughs> not be okay and they they always have their little ai a uh, little one who's almost even worse than them uh they they just if you let them discuss they will end up making things explode because one think it's fun the other confirms and then here they go um, and I'm gonna be a gadget here, so AI, explosions, boom. Yeah, so for uh, those of you that don't know, 
Um, we supplemented a little bit of the rule set here as we were trying to make it um, endless themed. So um, some of the things that you might hear or uh, see uh, our characters do, um, they're not exactly vanilla. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, all right, uh, Vito, tell us about yourself. So Vito is an automaton that uh, is kind of old. He's like a uh, hundred and four years old. However, he doesn't know a lot about the world nor about himself because it seems that he lost uh, some memory unit at a point of his lifetime. So he's now trying to find it back. That's one of the reasons he accepted this job because he thought that it might lead to a point where he could found, find this unit, but he's not sure. He's just trying to find a lead. And he's a wizard, so I will be playing a wizard in this campaign. Uh, his personality, uh, opposite, it's kind of the opposite to Vieke. So it's kind of conservative. He's trying to build things up instead of blowing them up. He's a really um, proficient tinkerer and he likes, he doesn't know why he, or, or he doesn't remember why. Uh, he likes to build automatons, uh, mechanical artifacts or technological things. Maybe it's related to his uh, racial skills or maybe it's just something that he did on his past but that's something that we will find out very cool all right cool and then Al alabraxar uh alabraxar is uh is an unfallen like a, a giant tree uh, walking <laughs> And uh, on this planet, uh, it was uh, like a city watcher. It's, uh, if you want, uh, like a police forces, because uh, as uh, it is very strong, uh, it likes to, to destroy, to break everything. But uh, some uh, other influence told him to go to the police forces to learn how to be more, <laughs> more less violent. And it worked, it worked now. Anabraxa is a pacifist. He is a, it is a, a druid, so he, he loves uh, all the nature, the protection of uh, the weakest. But uh, he's, he's still uh, a little violent if, it, if we need. <laughs> so uh, don't mess at uh, the friends uh, or the, <laughs> the nature, because uh, it's still, uh, it still like uh, to destroy everything. <laughs> So love to destroy things, not afraid of fire. Mm -hmm. No. Future to friend. To destroy things, but with the arms, not with the uh, explosions. Oh. So, no. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you all for sharing. Um, I think we'll get to know your characters more as we as we progress. Um, as you're walking, you you start to hear um, a set of footsteps. Um, approaching and off on the distance you see a man who's running up to you he's wearing a large coat a big long coat that extends uh, just past the knees uh, it seems to be made of some sort of uh, animal skin leather or something like that they're wearing a hat and uh, they look like they have a slight limp maybe on the left side and uh and as the figure gets closer they yell out to you hey there <clears throat> what do you all do you just wave yeah i how far away are we still uh, uh from him when he's getting close across. maybe like 30 more seconds and they'll be right next to you okay i'm good. waiting Shutting yeah. high, and little one is spinning around me. Yeah, in, in that case, I would also, you know, return the wave, but maybe quicken my step a little to catch up to them, and then when we're close enough to not need to be shouting over everybody, because uh, there's 
certainly people around in the town. I would uh, ask him, yeah, and who might you be? I? Oh, me. My name. Well, of course you'd want to know that. Um, <clears throat> my name's Tom. Uh, that's Tom Cern. Uh, I'm actually the sheriff here in town. I take care of uh, the people, the citizens, and, uh, and currently I'm on patrol right now. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes here in the, the early hours of the morning, it's, uh, it's not too safe. Um, so y'all best head into the city as soon as you can. I have another, uh, round to make before I can come in, back in, but, uh, but I'll catch up with you soon. Uh, I have a question. Uh, you've been on patrol, so maybe you found a lab somewhere? A laboratory? Um. Yeah? We, we don't have... We don't have a laboratory here in town, unfortunately. Um, you, okay. You're probably gonna be pretty hard pressed to find much technology here, as uh, it's been pretty hard times here on Sahara, and we're doing the best that we can. Just a, a quick question: What kind of danger are we expecting when you say it's not always safe in the early hours? <sighs> There's gonna be a lot of things that you all are gonna have to learn about living here on Sahara. How long are you going to be here for? Uh, probably a month, six weeks, but I'm mostly I'm, I'm concerned. Are we talking about wild animals or more about like bandits and, and outlaws or something like that? <sighs> it's it's like nothing you've ever seen. Um, I oh, oh them... uh, trust me, I've seen a lot and, you know, I'm generally here to see what I haven't seen. But uh, My eyes are just glowing. We, in, in, we will actually probably have to head out of the city relatively soon, but we will keep your warning in mind. All right, fair enough. Well, if you ever want to know more, um, you can always meet me back at, back at the station. I spend most of the day there, um, and uh, if I'm not there at night, it's probably because I'm getting uh, a little bit of sleep before the next day of work. So uh, good luck to you all. See you soon. And he, uh, he runs off. Bye! You can see he looks very determined. Have, I, a I'm, Have a good one. I'm, you know, glancing after him and then smirking to myself because, you know, this sheriff just walked up to us and, you know, warned us, oh, it's dangerous around here when there's a craver in the group, which is obviously dangerous. There's an unfallen, which is, you know, a big tough guy. And I may not necessarily have painted the picture of what Rabia looks like, but she's also wearing, you know, a long, like, duster-style coat, and she has two guns strapped to her hips and a rifle slung over her shoulder, and that isn't even accounting for the melee weapons she carries, so she's armed to the teeth and prepared to face any danger. And this guy comes up, oh, it's dangerous out here. Uh, Probably have more guns than you, my man. Never say this to Bieke, but uh, they just look like a child. So it may be like protect the child. Uh, if you try to say yeah, true, true. it to he, them, he, 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 you he may end up like... with an arm missing because of an unexpected explosion. Uh, they're exactly the right size, okay? They're not small. Yeah, I guess they might not know what a, what a cell phone is, but you know, we still have two people in this group that are probably, what, eight feet tall? Yeah, yeah, Rift's eight feet tall. But only intimidating appearance, I actually have a minus one to intimidation. M yeah, my, my intimidate score is higher than yours, I think. <clears throat> Alright, um, I'm assuming y'all want to continue on towards the city? Yeah, and you know, looking around a bit, because before when, when we were approaching, we probably saw mostly the, the mud and sticks wall, so what it looks, it doesn't look like in, inside the city, like... Is, is the wall the only part of the city that's in such shabby state, or are the houses also in, in bad state? Is there, like, any notable landmarks we should know about? Uh, obviously, we should be looking for where the sheriff's office is in case we do need to talk to him, but also, like, is there a market? Is there... Well, I almost said, said saloon, like, a bar or whatever. Yeah, excellent The question. mayor, that's where he's supposed to see. Yep. I guess they're somewhere. Yeah. So as you approach the city, um, there's a sort of a crude uh, wooden uh, gate, and there's a guard there that, uh, that asks you your name. Hi, uh, <clears throat> who are you, and uh, what is your business here in Dundon? 
Hi, I'm Bieke. This is Little One. And um, who are you? Uh, I'm the guard here on duty right now. Um, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, so what? What is your business here? Uh, and I turn back towards the others. What our business here? I forgot. <laughs> We've been hired to explore the oh, area what? around here. So first, of course, we need to check in, if you will, in the town so that uh, the authorities are apprised of our presence and no unfortunate accidents happen because somebody thinks we're trying to do anything untowards. Okay. I, I think I heard something uh, mentioned uh, from the night guard about you all coming in town. Um, yeah, you're going to want to make your way in probably to the town hall first. Um, and uh, and you're going to want to get set up. I think your lodgings are just on the uh, west side of town. Um, so you're free to enter. And uh, as you enter the city, you see um, houses that are made from stone. Um, some are made from sticks and mud and things like that. Um, these aren't nice houses. These are essentially hovels. And, uh, and on the west, as you enter in, you're entering in through the south gate. And on the west, as you enter in through the city, you see a, uh, a residential section of the city with a lot of houses um, packed very closely together. On your right, um, you see what looks like a market. Um, people are bustling around, buying things. The salespeople are yelling out, five dollars five dollars and uh they well i guess not dollars sorry i can <clears throat> five they're, they're they're endless bucks right <laughs> five endless bucks <clears throat> and uh and um in front of you down the street uh you see the town hall and that's all you can basically see here from the entrance of the city so what what uh what's your plan looking at how dangerous it would be to make something burn around the houses and how much the fire would spread to know if it's worth the risk to test these kind of things. Uh, I would guess figure out where we're staying so I don't have to keep carrying this chest. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe, I, the, I was, uh, maybe the best is to go to the city center <laughs> for our mission uh, before burning yeah, the, everything. The, the, uh, the question science. is really the... Um, the difference between you know dropping off my giant chest of stuff or uh, seeing the town hall first i think we'll probably need to head to the town hall just to make sure everybody is aware of our presence who needs to be aware so that uh, we don't get turned away at our lodgings or anything weird like that oh and th there's our cat guest i guess yep. <laughs> he's been sitting in my lap for a while now so you you know that making a fire here would be disastrous the houses are close together there's a lot of wood um the market district is also made out of mostly wooden buildings um it would be not a good idea to light a fire anywhere around here so mental notes uh try not to blow things up too close to here yeah. i've already seen city fires so no need to experience more about that <laughs> You, you know, before you set the city on fire, just learn to play the lyre, you know, uh, Ustinov style. Maybe we we should finish our mission first and be paid. And then, if you want, <laughs> we'll burn all the cities of the planet. But, but I don't want to burn the cities. Be there is no point in burning a city. Like, there is no point in having money. It doesn't make anything. It's it just dump material. It, it's, it's useless. Yeah, but look you know, at you know, as, as, as they're talking about that, I'm cutting in and probably going like, no, no, yeah, we're not going to to be burning down any cities here. If you burn down anything, it's the mansion of whoever is responsible for these people living like this. But why are you assuming I want to burn things? I don't want to burn things. I mean, I want to explode stuff. It's completely different. Oh. Explosions can start fires, is all we're saying, right? But yeah, yeah, in, any case, in any case, explosions, fires, whatever might happen eventually, that is not a problem for today. 
the problem for today is find the town hall and make the mayor aware that we're here. PK will just follow um, under her breath. There will just be no explosions, no explosions. One day I will have explosions, but today no explosions, no explosions. Remember, no explosions. Right, On so... the way to the uh, town hall, uh, Vito was looking for any kind of technology, uh, not labs, but uh, smith uh, smithereens. Uh, smithy. Yeah. Um, this would be perhaps an appropriate time for a perception check. Um, I don't think we've had any rolls this game okay. yet. Um, but, uh, but I think for the first roll of the, of the series, let's have, uh, let's have Vito give us a perception check. See what you see. Also, um, does Vito just quietly look around or does he make the rest of the group aware that he's looking for something because then we could keep an eye out as well uh, no i was looking on my side while we were walking to the city hall and you were talking about fire and explosions i was just looking around for <laughs> a smithy so i have right. to roll for yeah so you just roll a d20 d20 you can click perception on you your can character click perception. sheet and it'll okay. roll for you. So where's perception here? Here. Wow. Wow. I see everything in town. <laughs> okay, so that's a... So you roll a 16, but then with your no. bonus... No, no, that, no that, that, it's in that 20. Yeah, it's, it's in that 20. It, 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 the way it's set up, it, it always rolls with advantage. So oh, if so he doesn't have advantage, just take the first of the two numbers there and... Yeah, that's a nat 20. That's a critical success. He really does see everything in town. Okay. All right. Vito stands and I don't even know if the the robot uh, part of him just kind of like get, becomes alive with energy and his ears are kind of perked, his uh, audio recorders or whatever they are. Um, and, and you just kind of start pivoting and looking around and out of the out of the ether almost you hear the sound of a ting 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 and it seems to be coming from the um left side of town the north uh west side of town as you're walking in and uh it is possible um that there is a place where metal would need to be worked in that direction or at least that's what you're hearing, but you can't see anything right now. Um, all right, so I'm assuming people are going to keep on walking towards the uh, city hall. Um, seemed like that was the consensus, unless anybody wants to do something different. Okay. Sh shift this chest from one arm to a different arm. Okay, <laughs> one of the four. All right. Yeah, you, you have enough arms to go through until we, we get there. Right, it's shift not the pen from, from one arm to a different one. Also, fun arm gets tired. Perfect. All right. So as you approach the town hall, you notice that uh, this is the the nicest building that you've seen so far. It has a nice stone foundation. Um, it has actual painted wood walls, um, and there are what seem to be almost Roman like pillars um, coming up from the first story, leading up to the second story. And, uh, and up on the balcony, you see a window um, up at the top. And as you enter, uh, you see this desk in the front um, where a lady is sitting. And, uh, and as you approach this lady, she looks up to you and, uh, and says, Oh, dearie, oh, dearie, um, <clears throat> are, are, you, are you the new adventuring uh, uh, group that's coming into town? I turn towards the others. Uh, way? I guess that's one way to call what we're doing here. So I guess yes. Okay. Um, well, perfect. Uh, my name is Gail, and, um, well, uh, the mayor is very busy right now, uh, so he cannot see you, but, uh, he requested that I take you to your, uh, quarters and that I can get you set up with anything that you might need. 
Um, he's been very accommodating, and you all should uh, be very happy with the, the lodgings that he's provided. Um, would you like to go there now, or would you like to spend more time looking around the city? I'm going to point over my shoulder at Riz, who may or may not be shifting the chest to yet another arm, and saying, uh, we'd certainly appreciate being shown to our lodgings, because I don't want to ask my big friend over there to keep carrying our supplies all oh, the time. Oh, of course, of course. Oh, I, I didn't even think about that. You guys must be uh, exhausted from your travels. I know space travel can be, uh, can really take it out of you. And oh my, super you have... annoying. You have nothing to do. It's a hell. I can, I can't even imagine. I, uh, I was actually born here on Sahar, so I don't even know what it's like off planet. Um, but let me, let me show you to your, to your housing. And, uh, and so she, um, she kind of locks up whatever it was that she was working on her, on her desk. She puts a couple things into her, um, her drawers, uh, right there. And, uh, and she pops out of the town hall and locks up. And, uh, and as she leads you, uh, through the city, you get, uh, you get to see a little bit more of the city. You go back a different way that you didn't take the first time. And, uh, and she's taking you through the residential area. And on the side, you can see um, mothers um, putting out the laundry, hanging them up on clotheslines. You see kids playing with um, what seem to be leather balls that they're kicking along the street. The kids are dusty. Um, they don't necessarily seem super well fed. And, uh, and as you approach um, what seems to be your lodging, um, in the corner, you notice that you have a two-story um, house, and uh, it seems to be close to several other houses that um, are just a little bit nicer than the other houses um, that you've seen so far. And uh, she hands you the key and tells you, here's your um, lodging. Um, if there's anything that you need, please, please, please come and, come and ask me. Like I said, my name is Gail, and, um, and I'd really love to, to help you all. Um, I am very, I'm very busy. Uh, there's a lot of things going on here in the town right now. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, just come and ask me whenever you want, but I'll, I'll leave you to it. Um, hey, Gabe, 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 uh, yes, yeah. hi, hi, I'm Mieke, and this is a little one. Uh, nice to meet you, you. you're saying there's a lot of things going on. Uh, what kind of things? Is it interesting? Um, yeah. Well, is it fun? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, we we have um, so many so many nice people here in the town, and um, uh, well, currently there's uh, a lot of things going on outside of the town. Well, we could get into that Is a it little fun? bit later. Um, not as fun as you'd hope, actually. Oh. Uh, but um, but uh, maybe there's something that you could help us out with. I know that um, the sheriff was actually wondering. Uh, he's been talking about uh, getting together a group of people to to take care of uh, some of the things that have been. That have been bothering the city, um, but uh, but you might have to talk to him later about that. I'm not exactly sure about the specifics, um, but if there's anything else that you're curious about, fun things, um, you can always head over to the marketplace. There's lots of um, interesting characters over there selling their wares. You might even get to hear some gossip. Um, you know, just so just uh, go out and explore. But I have to get going, so I'll see you all later. Good luck. Goodbye. Before you head out, oh. can you give us any estimate for when the mayor will be back so we can go and see him as he requested? Um, well, uh, the mayor, like I said, is he's really busy. Um, it's it's possible that uh, you could um, set up an appointment with him. I can I can see if he has any free time this week, but it probably won't be until next week. Um, so I'm sorry, he's really busy. Rabia will. Pull of a face palm that would Picard it put Picard to shame, because this is exactly what she expected when being told she has to see an imperial official. Everyone in town seem everyone in town we've met seems to be quite busy. I have a question here for the GM. Uh, are actually all the the people that we've seen on the streets humans, or there are multiple races around the the? planet that's a great question the majority of people seem to be human and uh you notice maybe some some shadowy uh windows where there might be other people 
Um, there are several other um, races of creatures here as well. Um, but it's your pretty much run-of-the-mill um, groups that you would see in most populated um, areas around uh, in most of the popular uh, planets in the galaxy. Well, I mean, that's, that's a pretty broad statement in the Endless Universe because, you know, a cell phone like place a, will look different than... Like than an Endless... Uh, sorry, like a United Kingdom kind of... Uh, yeah, pro 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 so probably be... majority humans. And, mm -hmm. and majority allies. humans, but some other uh, races choose to live among them. And what, uh... what surprises me, actually, is that, you know, we've been walking through town here with our colorful posse of uh, Craver and and Fallen in, and an automaton. Like, of those, uh, and of course the Sophon, like, the Sophon that people might have heard of before. I'm small, Craver. people just don't see me. And, and you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Small and, and non-threatening. The tree, probably imposing, but maybe not super threatening, being a tree. But the Craver is the kind of, of uh, character I would expect to almost cause a panic because to most empire worlds especially you know not super uh, well defended worlds a craver is probably a terrifying thought given that you know a single craver can tear apart an entire ship full of pirates and survive mm -hmm. you get the you get the feeling that these people knew you were coming you get the feeling like this story about this group of five individuals that got sent in um, from a mysterious employer has spread like wildfire throughout this town and that the people knew um, that you were coming. Whether well, I'm or not, not surprised about things spreading like wildfire in this town. <laughs> whether or not they seem surprised or not to see you, uh, it's hard to tell. It, it's more are... that I was, I was expecting, you know, people to be a lot more tense in the presence of a craver. These people are obviously not your run-of-the-mill um, United Empire humans. Th 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 they've seen some seen, shit. These people have seen some shit. These people have been through a lot, and the reason why they're here on Sahar, um, on the edge of the galaxy, um, is because there was nowhere else left to go. And you get the feeling that these people are desperate. So, as you enter your house um you see what looks like a very cozy little house there are um there's a kitchen there's a living room and there's stairs leading up to the second story where you assume the bedrooms are um so it's up to you whatever you want to do at this point um I'm gonna i i run upstairs and jump on every every bed to find the bunciest one and it's going to be mine. Okay. Vieke is ran straight upstairs. Yeah, I I'm just going to um, coordinate with the Rith to, you know, put the giant metal box somewhere that it's not in the way, but still easily accessible if we need anything. Rith would um, cooperate and put that down and also uh, uh, ask um, uh, Robbie, are, are we friends? Well, probably more like colleagues for now, but uh, given that I don't expect to get a lot of help from the local authorities, because as you may uh, be able to tell, they seem to be very busy and maybe even a bit stretched thin for what they have to deal with. Uh, so it is good to keep your uh, allies close and work together. Uh, so R Rith doesn't have a face to give expressions, just like a glowing red eye and a metal head. Um, so it seems to stare for a moment, then pull back and say interesting, and then walks off to go find a room. Why is my mental image in Elcor? <laughs> uh, a bed adapted to my size and my type of body. There are. The, the, the accommodations have been very gracious. There are large beds. Um, and actually, all the rooms are separate. So there are five separate rooms upstairs um, where each of you can find a nice bed for you um, where you can curl up in uh, when you get tired. Uh, 
do I have a softened sized bed or an unfallen sized one? Because I, I told you I'm on the bounciest. I don't care about the size, but if the unfallen has to sleep on a softened sized bed, it may make things difficult. Um, the bounciest bed is the biggest bed, and uh, and it is the unfallen bed. Yes, this is designed for um, Alabraxar. So, uh, if you want that bed, you're gonna have to fight him for it. Um, I'm I'm on the bed, just jumping. So if they want it, they're gonna have to fight for it. Well, yeah, maybe. they they are <laughs> ten times my size. Yeah, but it's my bed. I lay on my bed, and no matter if you're just a dummy, <laughs> doesn't, that doesn't even, even notice. doesn't even notice the sofa. Yeah, <laughs> just so I'm, small. I, I am uh, obviously. I'm not violent. I won't fight with you for a bed. I just stay on my bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, mean, I, I try to move out when I see that they're not bluffing. <laughs> I said I try to. You tell me if I manage. Um, I was about to say that's a dexterity save. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a dexterity saving throw? <clears throat> I, th Where I think, are I the think saving you need to roll throws? to get out from under him. He just sat on you. Saving throws are under your proficiency bonus. Next to your stats. Okay, so is it dexterity? I guess. You get out. It's a 15, so you, you uh, 15. I jump because it's a bounciest bed, so I managed to make a super long jump and save myself. Awesome. Well, you are, you are out of the, the bed. Um, Alaba Sorry, I can't pronounce your name correctly. Alabraxar um, has laid down, and um, at this point, it's about the afternoon. There's still um, enough light in the day. Um, where you could go out and do something, or uh, you can hang out and plan um, what you're going to do the next day. Um, what do you all want to do? Yeah, sure. Before we make could, any could decision on that, uh, Rabia will head outside uh, in front of the, the house and, you know, just get an impression of what the weather is like in the middle of the day on this kind of dry planet, because, you know, it might well be one of those places where Afternoon is the time when nobody does anything because it's way too hot. It is warm and sunny. You might see some clouds on the horizon. But 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 warm, not sweltering swelteringly hot. No. So, so it's not we're not too hot. You know... So um what uh what is what is the plan here? I'm downstairs. I'm putting. Okay. I've lost my super bouncy bed. I'm sad. You're pouting downstairs, so you you're unhappy. Do you all yeah. want to plan your next day? What is what is your strategy here for um for doing your job? All you know is that there is an unexplained threat to the city. You don't know anything about the surrounding area. I'm just rummaging through my packs and then I see what I've been tinkering with during the last days of the spaceship travel. My little minds that they should work, but if only I could find a way to make someone step on them and not be flagged as the responsible one because otherwise the other people will be upset and then it's gonna be a bad overall mood and I don't wanna upset people, I just wanna try and see if these minds work. Okay. So what? I jump out of, of the couch and... Hey guys! Uh, Want to try if I can uh, um, uh, electrify uh, wild creatures? Yeah, when when you know when Wayaki came downstairs, pouting, probably slumping down on the sofa or something, uh, Rabia would sit down near them, kind of opposite to them, depending on how it's arranged, and you know, 
Just watch for a moment to to try judge the moment and then when they get out the mines and, and start fiddling with them she'll hold out a hand and say no, may I see because she's she may not be a engineer but she's still curious and has at least some knowledge of technology from endless excavations and you know working on the pilgrim expeditions and figuring that you know showing interest in whatever they are tinkering with will probably be good for the mood of our Sophon companion. And it's excellent. They're just shoving one mine onto your hands and they start rumbling and talking and talking and talking and they, again and again. Uh, they love when they have an occasion to explain what they've been making, how it works, how it should react, etc, uh, etc. Et so you can assume that Unless you stop them, they can keep talking about the mines for maybe the whole day. Yeah, uh, I will let the BIK talk for long enough that I'm sure that it's lifted their their mood again. And then I will cut in just with a simple remark of, yeah, they, these really need field testing, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they do. The mine hand the mine back, and then, then add, I'm sure when we set up camp somewhere, we'll find somewhere where we can try them. <gasps> that would be awesome. Camping time! Uh, Rith would have gone... <laughs> uh, Rith would have gone upstairs uh, after dropping the chest off, found whatever room was for it, probably spent a little bit of time organizing its supplies and realizing it may have needed to bring some more things to patch people up after meeting the party. And then it will eventually go downstairs and probably was watching some of this from behind. And while normally it would probably be looming ominously, it's really mostly just looming awkwardly, but doesn't say anything, it's just watching. Already doing the mental math of how many more bandages you need to get. <laughs> yes. All right, Vito, what are you doing? Uh, in case of Vito, it's kind of the same. He went up uh, to look for his room, not bed, because he doesn't need a bed. He just unplugged himself a uh, salt, so no, he doesn't need any kind of uh, luxuries. And when he, once he just uh, checked in for his room and left all his baggage, he came down and started to hear the conversation about technology and some interesting mines and explosion. He just smoothly joined the conversation just uh, to, to listen about it, but he didn't really interact with him. Okay. All right, well, as you all talk, it gets darker outside, the sun starts to set, and you all make yourself a lovely dinner. What do you have for dinner? What is everybody eating tonight? Literally anything. Yeah, the, the question here becomes, was there any uh, supplies for us provided with the lodgings? With you. Uh, so so we, we brought them and not, you know, uh, there was already something in the fridge at the place. Maybe some basics, but uh, you haven't gone to the market. You haven't bought any additional supplies other than what you've brought with you. Uh, anyone seeing Bieke trying to prepare some food? Uh, you, you can already see that it's going to be a terrible mistake. They're used to preparing and baking explosives. There's not used to uh, bake something else. Isn't there a Mythbusters episode about uh, frying a roast with an explosion or something like that? That's the kind of cooking they like. Yes, and uh, Bia will probably uh, cut in there to make sure that our kitchen does not explode. Um, she might, might not be a great cook, so it might be slightly burned, but that's preferable to explode it. Uh, BK, uh assumes that they're a terrible cook, but 
once you come in the kitchen, they're like, okay, it, it, it's your spot now. Uh, you prepare food, I eat. Uh, don't make me prepare food, please. Okay, bye. Okay. All right. Does anybody else want to talk about what they're what they're eating tonight? I'm not okay. sure if automatons have to eat so far. I think they have just to recharge energy. Yeah, I, I don't think automatons eat in the you might, you normal might oil, way. oil some things. They're, they're like, you know, Make kind sure of clockwork automata. So I guess yeah. you need to be cranked. <laughs> That's it. I could help you with that. What like is the equivalent of your bike where, where it's hard to reach. No, I, I, could help. I, I, I don't really feel about uh, getting help for, from the explosive uh, day. What does a, what does a, an unfallen eat? Just water, sun, and uh, I, I need to be on earth. Maybe you go uh, into the, the, the unfallen has uh, been, yeah, I was about to say, go, goes out into the back garden and just stands there for a while, I guess. Just dips your, dip your toes into the dirt a little bit, feel recharged. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not eating exactly, I, I, I have to be fed uh, just by, uh, by living on my own. Uh, if there is sun, water, and, uh, and dust uh, under my feet, uh, it's okay. I, I uh, guess the solution for the dinner is, you know, after I'm done, making it, whatever is slightly burned, that one goes to the craver because they have the stomach to stomach it. <laughs> Look, I just put it all in a canister, it gets converted into goo, and then I just eat that, so whatever. Just, just goo. Perfect. When Pretty you're much. mentioning the fact that you're eating sunlight, in Birka's mind, there is the... Huh. So sunlight, so sun is kind of a huge explosion that lasts for long. So sun is a controlled <gasps> explosion. Explosions, it's amazing. I sun love this is person. A controlled you, you know, it is a miasma of incandescent plasma. <laughs> yeah, big boob. It's nice. It's a big ball of uh, fusion. Anyways, so as you are all eating your objectively nasty meals, two of you aren't eating anything. Uh, and the other three of you just are not good at cooking. Things are burning. Um, the stove is on far too hot um, to cook whatever it is you're cooking. Um, and as you finish your meals, um, you all turn in uh, for bed. Um, Tito, you... Excuse me, Vito, you uh, plug yourself into the, the wall. Looks like they've set up... Yeah, looks like they've set up a small generator for you outside that has a... Uh, a cable uh, coming in through the window and it's set up where you can plug into it uh, but these buildings don't <laughs> no. have uh, electricity uh, it's uh, lamps I, I just knock on your door Beetle okay yes um, do you have a, a bit of extra for little one for she sure. hasn't eaten yet sure sure come here I have even a uh... multi multi electricity pack here so we can plug ourselves the same time that would be nice thank you how so does I take... okay yeah go for it i take little one and put it uh, on my side and just plug her it's her her yeah so i plug her i plug myself and i just say bye to gk and just stop sleep well yeah. oh and was... you too vito <laughs> perfect <clears throat> all right you all slip into uh, slumber and uh, and you start resting. But as you are sleeping, um, about halfway through the night, around sometime two in the morning or something like that, you start hearing sounds. You start hearing what sounds like gunfire. Oh, in the I wake up. And, um, and you can almost uh, pick out the sound of people yelling. Um, what do you do? I run towards Vito's room and I bang on the door. I'm I going to wake know, up. Jump, jump out of bed and see if I can see what's going on uh, out the window. Okay. Um, from your balcony, you can't see much. Uh, you can see the back side of the wall, um, but, uh, but you just hear, you hear fighting off in the distance. 
and uh, occasional flashes of light. Yeah, so, sorry for for uh, cutting in there, um, for Isabel and, and Adrian. It's okay. We are all waking up at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I just uh, wake up and I plug myself uh, quickly when I hear the noises, and at the same time I hear Vieke knocking on the door. So I just uh, let her let they come in and unplug a little one and hand it to they. So uh, I grab a little one. I hug her a little thanks to Vito, and then I run back outside just to see if I see some people moving on the streets like it's panic or is it usual? You yeah, don't I see anybody her. moving. There's nobody moving out on the streets. And the yes. sounds appear to be coming um, from the northeastern side of the city, actually. Would you remember what is on the northeast side of the city? You don't know. It was not the smithy. Hmm? It, the smithy was not on the northern northeast side. Uh, so what you know is that to the south of the city is there's a starport. Um, you also know that there's farms um, near the entrance of the city. As that's pretty much all you know. You know about where things are in, inside the city, but these sounds sound like they're coming from outside the city. Okay. What would you like to do? You're all awake? Yeah, first off, since, you know, I couldn't see what's going on uh, out the window, I will make sure to go and bang on everybody's door to make sure uh, they're awake and uh, just curtly say, you know, uh, there's trouble, it seems. And then head back into my room to, uh, to prepare, as in slip back into the armor and pick up some of the weapons because if it's the sound of gunfire that's potentially bad news or good news okay awesome we have little one running well flying in circles around the main room while i'm preparing stuff well mostly rearranging my bag to make sure that the most powerful explosives are on top Okay. I guess I guess for for Baiki, it's like a gun is just an explosion in a tiny metal tube. <laughs> well, yeah. Is it supposed to be anything else? Cool. All right. So who's taking who's right. taking charge here? What is everybody doing? It's not part of our mission. Nature is not in danger, so I will follow the group. Hey, Rabia. Uh, is it time for field testing? We don't know what's going on, so we shouldn't act too quickly. I'm personally in favor of as uh, pardon. I'm trying to remember remember your name. Alabraxar was saying that it's probably best if we stay here and wait to see if the trouble comes our way, because we don't want to get mixed up in anything that's none of our business, and then get in trouble with the authorities. Vito agrees. Alright. And uh, what is Rith doing? Uh, Rith is probably downstairs with everyone else. I don't think it sleeps in a bed. It's kind of spiky and would just tear that up. So just kind of like hunches, like crouches down and chills out and goes to sleep. Uh, so it, it probably got up and got went downstairs and uh, it will look at everyone else and just comment i mostly am here to patch you guys up if you get injured so if you are not leaving then i am not leaving i, I know you said um you know this one is a is a two-story house as yes. opposed to a lot of other houses in the city now i'm wondering is there a way for us to get on the roof as well so that we would have a higher vantage point and might be able to see what's going on from uh, yeah, distance. there's not a there's not like a conventional way of getting to the roof, but you could try and go out a window and climb up if you wanted to. I can ask little one to see if she can through, through see the, things. The little one can fly, and I I can try to climb up. Um, I guess I should make an athletics check for that though. Yeah, give me an, well, give me an athletics little one to get up on the roof. Little one can't go too far from me though, so her height is limited. 
Hers, not mine. Is that it? I was fully prepared for that one to be a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> so no, first day of the adventure, fall out the window. Okay, so I'm reading a 19 plus 2 for a total of 21. Yes. So not a nat 20, okay. Um, it, it'll probably help me if you uh, just tell me what you roll uh, whenever you do a roll, because... I'll be switching in between uh, screens you're, you're, stuff. you're switching screens, yeah. It, it's a 21, so I guess, okay. you know, um, probably just, you know... Describe to me, me how you get up find, on that finding, finding any window where there's any kind of, like, bar near it that I could uh, use to climb up. I'm, I'm not sure how much rain they get, if there would be, you know, a rain pipe to climb up in the stereotypical way. You don't way. see any rain pipes. Or, not a or rain just, pipe in sight. Just, just find anywhere where maybe I can reach the top of the of the wall depending on, on given that it's you know a wooden house there might be places where i can there are cracks i can use anything yeah. it's not a wood cabin necessarily but you see places where you could definitely grab onto the wood and uh and you definitely uh rise up get onto the roof um things are very dusty but uh but you're hands were sure and uh, and you made it onto the roof um from the roof you can see that out towards the northeastern part of the city there is a big field um full of grass and various shrubs and things like that and in this field um you see a small group of people um about two three maybe four it's hard to tell from this distance um and they are lined up in a sort of a delta formation and um and they are firing weapons they have guns um some of them look like they might even have melee weapons um and they're they're shooting at what look like dogs maybe out in the distance you're not exactly sure what they are so they are shooting away from the city they're shooting away from the city at things um, trying to come towards the city. Well, that, that, that at least um, explains that there's not some kind of uh, pirate, raid, uh, bandits, whatever, trying to attack the city. And um, given that, you know, they've been here for a while, I think Rabia would be fairly confident that these people know how to handle this kind of situation, even if, as mentioned before, they seem to be having their hands full most of the time mm -hmm. okay well as um are you gonna get back down i guess now that you've seen what you've seen uh, yes certainly uh no, no the question is what kind of dm are you do you make me roll again for climbing down yeah, you can just go down. <laughs> it's fine um yeah it's cold up on that roof uh, you notice that uh, although the temperatures aren't crazy hot during the day, it does seem to get pretty cold at night. And, uh, and so you get down before you get too chilly. And, uh, and I guess each one of you kind of sit in bed, maybe a little bit anxious from the, the loud noises. But eventually the sounds die down. No, no. And... Loud noises is like a lullaby. Well, in that case, Rieke <laughs> is straight asleep. Out like a light. And... Um, and uh, and you all fall asleep again and and wake up in the morning, early, bright and early. Um, so as you wake up, um, you all get out of your rooms, you go downstairs, and this is your first really your first day um, here on this mission. You have six weeks to prove to the company that you're worth their money, that they've paid you to come down here, and that there's something here on Sahar that's worth being here for. Um, there's a lot of things that you could spend your time doing today, um, but you all need to decide what you're going to do, um, as individuals. Um, you're a team, but, um, it's up to you to see how best you can work together. I have one quick question before, uh, you know, I really think about what we uh, I would do. Have we been supplied with a map? You no. know. 
so so our characters know nothing about the surroundings unlike us so that is you know important to know because that uh, puts a, a certain limit on the planning yeah the map that i linked technically you don't have a map yet so technically you don't know it but i just wanted to make sure that it was available for when we needed it uh, uh maybe we should try to see the mayor and okay. ask him for a map and maybe ask him for some uh, information about uh, the, what is around the city uh, yesterday he was too busy to receive us maybe today we could uh, see, see him yeah, I, I don't think our chances are too good, but we should give it a try and then maybe see if we can see the sheriff because uh, Gail mentioned that apparently the sheriff is looking for some some help and it might just line up with uh, our goals. And, and maybe... I, I guess worst case, if uh, the sheriff can't provide us with a map, um, what's his name? Tom. Riley at the, at the starport uh, might also be able to help because and he, just he imagine, assured us that he'd help us uh, he, have my if, if we had the sheriff maybe it means field testing could be so your goal is to head to the town center and go to town hall in my case i will suggest to the group if maybe one of us or two of us could maybe go to the market as it was also told to us that we might hear some rumors there and uh, maybe we could spread the group to get more information and meet here at noon or something I like who would like to go to the market and who would like to go to city center market when you when you propose markets uh you see a panic rising on Beaker's face like wait but how do I buy rumors is is there a special stall to buy rumors? Yeah, you you see my face like it's not really expressive as I'm an automaton myself, but uh, it's like mm, so far for what I know you can have multiple ways of doing it and yours might be one of them. You can maybe be, be helpful there. Yeah, I, I'm you know going to walk a little closer to them and say yeah there if you if you know the right people you can definitely buy rumors information but i don't think we're familiar enough with this city to know exactly who will take money for information the recommended approach would be just hang around and you know get that data to put it in scientific terms listen i see do, do, how long do we think going to the city center will take? Because if it's a quick trip, we could all stick together, go do one and go do the other also. I, sure? I mean, Rabia's opinion of how long will it take to get to go to the city center is however long it takes to walk there, because then we'll be told that the mayor isn't there. But then we, you are going to see the sheriff, are we? Yes, at least Rabia's plan was go see the sheriff. Whether or not we can actually help the sheriff, I think it would be yeah, nice. illuminating regarding what kind of dangers we might be facing as we explore. It would be illuminating as to what kind of field testing I could finally be doing. Because I still have my minds that supposedly work, but I have to try, I have to test them. So I want to talk to the sheriff, so at least I can know if these uh, strange creatures that little one t told me about um, are liked by the local population, as in must not explode, or are disliked, as in uh, field testing. Uh, well, Bieke is, uh, as always, fascinated by the opportunity to blow things up. And so I'm assuming you're going to be heading to the city hall um, with Alabraxar. Is anybody going to go to the market with Vito? Uh, I guess Rithwell, so no one's going alone. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, Rubia would prefer not to see the Imperial officials, but the job requires it. 
Okay, so you two will be heading to the uh, city center. All right. Yeah, at, at, le at least to head to the sheriff after and find out what the hell is going to be trying to kill us on this planet. I have a question uh, for, you, for you, Steph. How obvious is it that you do not want to see the mayor? Because uh, you can see BAK uh, is terrible at reading people. So I just wanted to know if they realize you hate it or if they don't realize it. I mean, she w would be usually relatively good at hiding it when it's necessary, but I don't think she would consider it necessary to hide her dislike for the Imperial officials uh, when they are not present. So it would probably be fairly obvious of, you know, uh, heaving a sigh when the prospect of we need to go see the mayor is brought up, etc. Probably has a, a bit of a chuckle and... Um, case excitement and potentially blowing stuff up because yeah uh, pilgrim has worked with stuff on this before she knows that they can get um, very into their experiments let's put it that way you, you can feel then a little tug on your arm whatever piece of clothing there is hey rabia uh, a little thing when well, usually I'm doing it when it's a lecture that I hate, but uh, I guess it would work for you. Try to look at uh, the settings and the room you're in and try to find the weak points. And imagine if you only have three charges, where you should put them. Okay. She, she, she will, you know, suppress a laugh and smirk and say, I don't usually work with explosives, and generally, the weak pod, uh, point is right on their jaw. <laughs> you heard, you can hear the very first Sophon laugh <laughs> ever. Perfect. Alright, so you three um, are gonna head to the city hall first. We'll go with you first. As you walk through the city, um, you see the inhabitants starting to bustle around. Um, people are getting ready for the day. And uh, as you arrive at the city hall, um, you enter and you see um, Gail again. Uh, and, I, I step away for a second. I have to go medicate an old man cat. I'll be back. You're totally good. Um, you uh, see Gail and um, she says, oh, hi. Um, hi. Hi again. How are you doing? Um, wow. I didn't expect to see you all this early, bright and early in the morning. I expected you all would be sleeping in um, since... Uh, well, I mean, I guess you know, uh, you probably didn't sleep too well last night. Um, anyways, uh, what can I help you with? Well, uh, I turn to what the rest of the group. Uh, what can she help us with? Well, yesterday she told us maybe we could encounter the mayor, so maybe she can uh, have a, organize a meeting with him. Um, yeah, I, I talked with the mayor um, yesterday, and uh, he said he, w he probably won't be able to see you uh, potentially next week, maybe on Tuesday. Um, he, he'll be in his office then, and, um, and you can come by uh, the city hall. Well, maybe, you, maybe you should tell the mayor that we, ha we have a mission here. So I understand maybe he's very busy, but uh, we don't have lots of time next week. We don't know where we will be next week, but probably not. Yes. Pro probably not the, here in the city. Probably not in the city. Um. Well. Uh. Well. I'm not sure uh, what to tell you. Uh. But uh, he's he's not available right now. So. Um. If if there's anything else that I can do well, for you. Well. Well. Then let's see about go about this rationally. Um. It was requested that we see the mayor. For what purpose? Um, why, why do you, why does the mayor want to see you? Yes, because it is, even for imperial bureaucracy, it is unusual for an official to request meeting somebody and then not being able to meet them. Um, well, uh, you, you know, the mayor really likes to be, uh, privy to all the going goings-on here in the city, and, um, well, uh, you know, like... 
like I said, um, he is very busy, but he is very interested to get to know you and, uh, and know your intentions here on Sahar because, I mean, you can imagine, uh, people coming from, from the stars, uh, ooh, it must be nice to... <sighs> it's super else. boring! Oh, well, you say that, but, uh, well, I live here, so... <laughs> okay. uh, I'm, I'm under the impression uh, they need a lot of space for uh, their experiments, and spaceships are generally pretty crammed in spite of the name. But uh, luckily for the mayor, there will be no, probably be no going-ons in the town to be apprised of, because we would be heading out to uh, explore the, the surroundings, because we've heard rumors that there's some old uh, ruins here that we're interested in. Oh, the ruins. For, um, for, for, for archaeological reasons. And on that note, that is the what you could help us with. Yeah. You have, um, you have the map. You know what? I actually have just the thing. I think I could probably uh, ra wrangle up uh, an old map around here somewhere. Give me a second. As she kind of uh, rustles through her um, drawers, eventually pulls out a rather dusty, rather old-looking map. And... Um, and basically, uh, this is a map of the surrounding area around Sahar. Um, you can see on the map that Dundon is relatively uh, centered on the map. You see that to the north, east, um, there seems to be meadows. Um, and above the meadows, there's a river that's labeled the Izine River. Um, this river stretches all the way from the east, uh, all the way to the west side of the map. And um, above that, you see an abandoned dig site on the map. Uh, to the south, you see um, what are, what looks like a bunch of circular geometric shaped patterns on the map. And it says ruins. You can see that there's a little house um, sketched onto the map next to those ruins. Below the town is the starport. That's where you came from. To the right, you see a large, large desert, a big sandy desert. Um, in the middle somewhere, there is an oasis. Um, and far further through the desert, you see um, a little drawing of a ship um, that's been labeled there, potentially a crashed ship, um, but there's no other information. And then to the top right, you see that the road that goes out of town to the east leads through what are called the Hills of Cressa. And past the Hills of Cressa, in, nestled in the mountains, um, is an outpost. And this is the most updated map that she has to give you. And so uh, she said- Is it the most up updated map as in uh, it was the right one one year ago, or the right one one century ago, or, or before? Because if there are you ruins... You want to know how old the, the map, map is? Um, are, you, are you curious about the map? Uh, yeah, because there is ruins here, but here it's an outpost. But if the outpost is like 20 centuries ago, maybe mm -hmm. it's ruins and ruins. Uh, sure, I don't yeah. know. Uh, well, uh, you know, we, we don't make maps every year, <laughs> but uh, but uh, our scouts do the best that they can. I think this map is probably a couple years old. Yeah, it's recent then. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we regularly send people out. Obviously, recently, things have gotten a little bit, um, well, harder to do. Um, so. Oh, yeah, the shooting at night. Bing, uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> Yeah, it like was I nice. Like I said, I'm not really, I'm not really uh, well, the one to ask about that. I'd, I definitely talk to the sheriff. He's, he's a little bit more in the know about that. I just help out with things here at town hall. We are going to go see the sheriff uh, later. Um, Rabia just, you know, absentmindedly cuts in when, when that's mentioned because she's busy using her data pad to actually take pictures of the map so that they have the map because they're sure as so hell not dragging around the big paper map because that's just asking for losing it <laughs> and little one is doing the same thing perfect cool so you have you each have in your inventory pictures of the map or whoever's holding the map um itself um which will allow you to get from place to place um easier 
So, um, well, is there anything else I can help you with? Would you tell us where is the sheriff, please? We'd like to, um, to speak with him. Ah, oh, that's a great question. So, um, the sheriff is probably going to be over at the sheriff's station. That's just to the west of the town hall. You just head down the road there. It'll be on your right. Can't miss it. BIK raises their left hand. So, this right? What's that? No. The one where you have the... Yeah, the one on the right yeah. side. Mm -hmm. This one? Not the yeah, correct yeah. hand, the right one, as in the one that's not left. <laughs> I can see how you can be confused. <laughs> you, you can see BIK extremely confused. Um, anyways, she uh, kind of shoes you out almost now that she knows that she you don't need anything else and uh she's like i'm, I'm very busy <laughs> have a good one yeah um, rabia is probably going to to take point for the group here because um, seeing that uh, bak is clearly confused about what direction to go she figures she'll take one because with her yeah. exploration training she has a pretty good sense of direction and should probably be able to find it Okay. Hey, uh, uh, um, what did she mean when saying that the right hand was not the right hand, but the right hand was the correct one, and the not right was the left, but the wrong? Uh, you understood something? Yeah, just follow us. And uh, remember, the right hand is where you send is at the left hand. BAK is obviously just, uh, very confused. BAK does exist the forking. <laughs> just follow us. <laughs> and, it's, and everything will be okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure self and parents are too scientific to do pull, uh, to pull that thing all parents do of, you know, right is where your thumb is left. <laughs> all right. So um, you all are going to start heading towards the sheriff's station, but we're going to pan back over to... Um, are two members of the party who went to the market. Um, so as you approach the market area, you see people walking around, people selling their wares, people buying, haggling for prices. You smell just fresh food. You smell other unpleasant smells as well as the, you know, the, uh, the soft sounds and the harsh sounds of, of a marketplace uh, kind of assault your ears as you turn the corner into the marketplace. And um, you can see many different shops, um, many different types of vendors. Um, and then on your left, you see a larger store um, than the other ones. And, uh, and you see a sign that says general store. Um, where do you want to go? Okay, so what kind of... Um, uh store do we see from where we are at the moment what kind of you see an assortment you see okay. ones that sell food you see ones that sell equipment you see some that sell weapons uh you see some that um look like they're more for planning and building purposes um projects and things like that so they have a uh, things made of uh, uh, iron and they may have blasters or it's only all the uh, an antique uh, equipment uh, weaponry. you can go find out okay we we don't see it from the point we are at no you just see the storefronts you're you've just entered the uh, the market area but you can okay. see the signs on the front that are clearly stating that uh, there are weapons to be had in this place Okay, I stare at Reef and ask her, Reef, what do you think? What do I think about what? Where, where could we find uh, any interesting rumors within the, the events that elapse in, at night? Uh, Reef just stands there for a moment, considering this. And then it looks towards the general store. Okay, so there. Okay, we can we can check out. So I will try to lead to the general stores, 
and check uh, from the door. It's it, is it open or is it closed? How... Hi, welcome in. Okay, so the door is open. Yes, a a man uh, in front of you uh, welcomes you into the store. It seems like they are almost waiting at the entrance. Um, store's not super busy, um, but this man is uh, almost average height. Uh, he's wearing a green cloak. Um, you can see from his build that he's well statured. Um, you could almost say he's the perfect size. And uh, there's something interesting about his head. It's not like most other heads. Um, it's almost a little bit elongated. Almost like somebody grabbed the top of his head and went... Mur? And he says, Hi, my name's Hal. <clears throat> uh, welcome to my store. Uh, we have the best uh, items in the city. You will not find anything i kid you not anything more perfect um in the city i have the best wares don't go Do anywhere you, else uh, so, somehow i'm imagining that the general store is like the only good house except for the town hall in the entire city <laughs> because the general this place store is immaculate be, this this place must be hell for a whole issue <laughs> Do I fit through the door frame? I know I can duck down, but I'm kind of wide. Um, it's a big store, uh, okay. and there's double doors at the entrance. Um, if you go sideways, I think you'll be fine. I uh, know it's got spiky things coming out of its back, so it has to like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can hunch down, crouch down. Um, they they have to accommodate larger guests on occasion, um, but I would definitely be careful in the store. Um, not to move around too quickly because there seems to be a lot of items, a lot of, um, you know, useful materials and things like that that are immaculately um, organized uh, by color, by alphabetically. Um, there are lots of different um, things that you can see around the shop, colorful things. Um, and, uh, and so you enter in and, and Hal says, what can I, what can I do for you today? I do I know you? I you 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 looks like a person I know. Um, I get that a lot. Yeah. Um, whew, it's a long story, but uh, well, I'm a Horatio. <laughs> I'll just come out and say it. Um, I'm one in a long line of uh, perfect people. Let's just say, and uh, you know, here I am. You're probably thinking to yourself, why is this guy on Zahar? Well. I, uh, that's a long story. You see, the other Horatios, they just, uh, they didn't understand. They couldn't, they couldn't understand what it was like to be me. And, uh, and so I found out that, uh, you know what? I don't belong there. They're not good enough for me. And so I left. And I have made my way here on Sahar. I run the most successful shop in town, and those guys have nothing on me. Uh, sounds good. You have to present to your family. Oh, we don't talk. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, they so, do whatever they do. Okay. Not even Christmas? <laughs> no. Not even Christmas. That's sorry. We celebrate no, no, I'm The Horatio equivalent of Christmas. Is that the birthday of the original Horatio? Horatio Day? Yeah, that's basically Christmas for us. Well, anyhow, uh, we were looking for some kind of information. I'm not sure if you sell any type of goods in that way. I sell lots of goods. Can you see around you? The, I mean, <laughs> when I said it was the best, I wasn't lying. It's the best. <clears throat> what are you in the business? Not often tangible. What are you in the uh, market for? Hmm? What can I get you? Uh, you looking for bags? You looking for swords? Actually, I don't have any of those. They're down the street. But uh, you know, we got lots of things. Letter openers. You could probably use that in a pinch. We are. We're more interested in knowledge. Knowledge. Ah, now we're talking. Um, 
what can I what can I do you for? <laughs> Would you be acknowledgeable of any kind of ruins or events that had happened over the town recently or in the long past away? That would be ruins. Maybe... Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I don't know too much about it myself, um, but there is a huge, uh, set of ruins, uh, towards the south, uh, southwest actually of town, and, um, I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd go over there, personally, um, there are a lot of stories the town folk, um, talk about, I, I, since I am the general store owner, um, I hear a lot, and so, you can trust me when I say, um, you're not going to want to go to the ruins unless you're looking for trouble. Uh, there are a lot of people that have either gone missing or gone crazy because of having spent time over in the ruins. Um, but if you're interested in the ruins, I mean, I know you all came from out of town. <laughs> Off planet, I guess. <laughs> Lucky you. Um, uh, I would suggest uh, talking with old man Gregory. Um, he's... <sighs> He's a character, that's for sure. Uh, but he lives uh, just over, like, right kind of next to the ruins. He lives just uh, on the outskirts of them. So, but I mean, he, I gotta be honest with you, he's a little, ooh. <laughs> I don't want to tell you, I don't know how much useful information you're going to get from him, but, um, but that's probably your best bet. Uh, just don't mention his daughter, okay? It's, uh, it's kind of a sore subject for him, so, uh, you know. I don't know what you're going to find out, but uh, but if you're interested in, in learning about the ruins, he's he's the go-to. Just uh, follow the, the path just outside of town to the to the south. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Al. Yeah. I mean, it's my pleasure. Anything I can get for you? Anything I can sell you? <laughs> I do have the uh, best. I... I look around and check if there is any kind of tech pieces like uh, uh, the ones I'm missing because I'm trying to look for um, memory units. I don't think it will be here, but who knows? You see some batteries. You see some wires, some cables, what look like extension uh, cords. Um, seems to be all pretty low tech. The people on Sahara don't seem to have very high, uh, high tech stuff, um, which is quite unusual, um, since most, most of the things that you have and are used to is rather high tech, but it's, uh, it seems to be due to their, uh, kind of distance from the center of the galaxy that things really haven't made it out here yet. Um, the normal, uh, luxuries that other people enjoy, they just don't have. So I turn over Ritz and say, Hey Ritz, do you need anything else here or...? Uh, Ritz... Ritz is looking for if there's any bandages. <laughs> Burn salve is what you need. <laughs> yeah, just um, what medical... Ritz is looking for medical supplies. Sure, yeah, I, I have a first aid kit right here. Would you like that? How much is the first aid kit? Oh, it's not that much. Um, uh, it'll cost you like ten silver. All right. Uh, Rith Rith will absolutely buy a first aid kit for ten silver. So <laughs> perfect. Well, um, happy to do business with you. Enjoy. Uh, hope you don't need it. <laughs> and he just kind of laughs and uh, starts cleaning the shelves, organizing the already perfect things on the shelf. Okay, so we are heading out. Yeah. Shall we move over back towards the rest of the party? I'm just going to assume that um, you all are going to catch up with them. Um, maybe you kind of waited out for them out by the city hall. Um, and uh, we, we did, we, um, when we were at the house, we said that we were meeting at the house at noon. Right, so right, right. I so, think we will head there. Perfect. So I, you all I, meet in, back up at the house. Yeah. In my way there, I will buy a pair of um, wheels and a, um, I think one, two, three, four blocks of uh, blocks of metal iron. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be pretty expensive to buy metal um, yeah. here. Mm. Uh, you don't really see any shop that's like dedicated to metal. You see these weapons uh, makers, um, but uh, but they don't seem to have any raw materials. Um, but you do find wheels in the general store. Um, and if you'd like to purchase those as well, you can. No, if, if there is no no metal uh, allowed, uh, I, I think I will even buy the weapons. Okay. All right. So you head back to this, the home, and um, at the home you meet up with each other, and together you make your uh, way towards the is, since, sheriff since, station. Since Gail had said, you know, we were there pretty early, yep. wouldn't we probably have made it to the sheriff before noon? Um, so. Sure. Um, it's possible that you could have. Do you want to go there before the rest of the party arrives? I'll leave that up to the rest of the party, whether we headed there immediately or went home first. Because, you know, since we then had the map, we could also go home to wait for uh, Rith and... Ah, uh, sorry, I for forgot the name. Vito. Vito. Um, and, you know, take a look at the map and plan what we might might be doing until they arrive. Okay, what do you three want to do? You want to wait for them? Go back to the house, or would you like to go to the sheriff's? Just you three. I, I want to go to the sheriff's because it means getting closer to testing the mines, at least. But if they want to go back home, I would just follow them. Uh, maybe I will go with them because uh, they don't know where the right is and where the left. So <laughs> I think... They will never find the sheriff. Hold okay. On. All right. Sounds good. Um, so then everybody meets back up at the house. And uh, I'm assuming you exchange information. Tell them about the rumors about the old ruins. Um, old man Greg. Old man Gregory. Old man Gregory. Oh, I, I guess it's his house. And I point at the little projection little one is making. Yeah, you do notice that on that map, you remember seeing a house nearby the ruins, which must be Old Man Gregory's, as it's the only house that's nearby the ruins and outside the city. Nobody else seems to be willing to live outside the city, except for the um, people in the outpost. So as you head on your way towards the sheriff's uh, office, you arrive at the sheriff's office and, um, and you can kind of see that this is a multi-use building. It doesn't look like your typical sheriff's office. In the front, there's almost like a waiting area, um, a couple of holding cells, and then towards the back, um, you see a lot of these prison cells. And um, near the back of the prison cells, you can see this kind of all through the singular building. Um, you see uh, what looks like the backside of a forge. And um, you feel heat coming from the back side of the building um which must be unpleasant for anybody trapped in the prison cells um but uh but you can hear the soft clank of of metal being worked outside in the back of the uh the building so you don't see the sheriff um as you walk inside the sheriff's office um but um there is a receptionist um what do you do I move towards the one empty cell and I try to picture in my mind how would I de disassemble it? The the walls or the door or whatever. The receptionist sees you and he's just like, hey, 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 get away from there. <clears throat> okay. What are you doing? Okay. What do you think you can just walk in here and start looking at the cells? Can well, I help you? Yeah, I yes. wanted to look at the cells. Just... Don't don't mind them. They're just uh, very energetic, and they always need to occupy their their mind with something where they get fidgety. Okay, well, tell them to do it somewhere else. Uh, we have uh, uh, we're, we're we have here a job to, to see, do. We're we're here to see the sheriff. Oh, he's out back. Well then, if you don't mind, can we head back to see the sheriff? Uh, yeah, yeah. You you all are the uh, the new new group in town. I'm assuming. Yes, the we've been referred to as adventurers. I'm not adventurer. sure. That's right. That's rich. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I'm Every day not, is an adventure down here on Sahar. <laughs> I, I don't agree with the term, but uh, yeah, we're, we're here. Um, arrived yesterday, and you know, the sheriff mentioned um, there's a lot going on, and some people have said we, we should talk to the sheriff because uh, we might be able to help out. Yeah, head on back there. Go for it. So you go on back there, and as yeah, you... I'm, I'm... is everybody else coming along, or yeah, I'm coming down. along, but I'm slowing my pace when we're passing through interesting doors. But I, I, I follow you. Um, I I think that probably uh, the tight quarters in the building don't allow um, for Rith and Alabraxar to fit in. Um, so you two are probably going to have to go around uh, on the outside. Um, but as you meet up uh, in the back of the building, um, you see the sheriff shirtless. Um, he has his shirt tied around his waist and he's sweating and hot as he is pounding um, on an anvil. What looks like a very high tech sort of anvil. There might even be some sort of... Um, almost like forging a uh, station there with different molds and things like that. Um, and uh, he seems to be putting together um, what looks to be a firearm um, as he makes it out of metal pieces um, that he's working. Um, I'm he running towards whatever he is doing and someone will have to stop me, I guess. If if I manage to react quickly enough, I will grab Bjorki by the shoulder to stop her from running in and probably, you know, surprising the guy and it wouldn't be pleasant if he drops like a burning piece of metal on his foot or something. Whoa, so, whoa, hey. Are, how are y'all doing here today? <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, I didn't, well, I gotta, gotta admit, I didn't expect to see you here. Um... <laughs> Let yeah, me tell well, you. We, we didn't ex we didn't expect to see you know a forage at the sheriff's office either, <laughs> so I guess that makes it two for two. Yeah, uh, well we you know, it's always a it's always an adventure here. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of things that you don't know about this city, and I mean I know we didn't have time too much time to talk the other day, um, well yesterday I guess, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I there's a lot of important work we have to be doing here, and the the citizens need us uh, to protect them. I have a question. Yeah. Would it protect them if I deploy mines around the city? Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, that walk around out there as well, as we have our farms on the outskirts of the city. Oh. Uh, so probably not a great idea, but uh, <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Um. Anyways, I'm I'm a little busy here. I'm. I'm actually making uh, some new weapons uh, to help defend the city. Um, what kind of weapons? Can I see them? Can you show me? Uh, well, uh, you know, we're making kind of a what, what we call a long rifle here. And uh, it's uh, sort of a plasma gun, I guess. Uh, kind of rudimentary, but it's what we can make and uh, it seems to work pretty well. Um, and uh, you kind of see off to the side... Um, a bunch of a bunch of tools and things like that um, and uh, and you can tell that he's like mid um, mid making this gun um, so I'm gonna allow you if you'd like to help him uh, make this weapon um, I'm I'm assuming that some of you have a certain proficiency in crafting or anything like that um, who would like to participate? Everybody want to try and help, or? Yeah, sure. Okay. I saw I'm it. concerned for the gun that will result from me okay, helping. It's like, you, you know, it's like that, what was it called? That, that tiny gun? Uh, the cricket. Uh, the, 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 noisy the, the cricket, cricket exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, Vito and um, Bieke. Um, I'm gonna need both of you to roll, I guess it's a, it's a proficiency roll for, um, dexterity, I think, is what we decided for the tinkerer, um, trait. At this point, you know more about your character sheets than I do, um. <laughs> uh, the big question is, I have a tinker's tool, a mechanist tool, and okay. the tech 
uh, specialty. So this won't As be in, tech. I'm the tech guy. Right, this won't be tech. This will be f uh, more close to tinkering uh, or machine. Tinker was, was intelligence or was uh, dexterity? Um, I, I'd say, you know, it could also, in this case, be, be intelligence uh, for them to test. Since, you know, it is, as a plasma gun, it is still relatively high tech it's well like, then i'm rolling tech too because i have higher intelligence than dexterity yeah, i mean it, it, it's not like we're talking about a oh, black for? powder firearm here right <laughs> no no this is not a black powder this is a high tech uh futuristic kind of like space rifle um but yeah intelligence sounds fine for that so in my case it's an 11. you got an 11 okay um and then i got a 23, oh, 23. okay um, all right. So would you like to describe how you both uh, help in this gun making process for us? So in this case, it seems that Gigi has more insights than me. So I let her lead the, the explanation and I just try to avoid the explosive parts that she's trying to add. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you, you can also see Bieke, uh communicating even though you can't hear anything but i think for you vito you can almost hear something uh when bk is talking with the little one and they're discussing hmm, where should we put the additional firepower and so you can stop us right at the right moment every time we're not used to people being able to hear our discussions we'll have to learn to avoid this but for now, you can stop us. And yeah, I think it may be a bit higher quality than what the sheriff's, sheriff is used to. Yeah. So as as you start working with the metal and uh, you obviously seem to know what you're doing, some of the methods that you use are not necessarily what the sheriff would do, but... Uh, not necessarily safe either. He seems impressed. Um, Vito, you seem to be putting in a lot of effort, um, but at certain times the sheriff looks at you and kind of wonders, does he know what he's doing? Um, but all in all, between the two of you, you're able to help him finish this weapon, and it's a beauty. It looks great. It's gleaming, um, and, uh, and honestly, like, you would, you would love to, to use that. It looks like a pretty great... Um, long-range weapon um, the sheriff looks at you all and he says all right well this has been fun but uh, it's probably time we we sat down and we talked yeah it was super fun thanks and so um, he says come into my office so you go into the sheriff's office and when, when, when the this sheriff wasn't, walks this wasn't your office uh, n no this is outside this is where I do my uh do my tinkering, you know. Uh, sometimes I just, uh, I just like to, um, you know, be here, out here with the, the heat of the fire and the metal, and it just makes me feel at home. Um, okay. Yeah. When when the sheriff walks past me, uh, back into the proper uh, sheriff's um, office building, I will just quietly le uh, lean in and quietly say to him, first time you try that." Aim it at somewhere with a lot of space. Uh, duly noted. Thank you. Um, anyway, so he puts... Yeah. Can can Rip and Albraxis get in far enough to get to the office? Uh, sure. Sure. We'll say that... Or let's... I don't know. The, the, the sheriff's office is pretty tight. Let's say that he opens up the window and you guys kind of both like peer in through the window because... Um, y'all are pretty big and his office isn't big enough for all five of you and him. Um, so maybe you two, uh, stay outside. I'll crack open the window so that you guys feel included. Um, there's just not much room. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, he, uh, he grabs a towel. He kind of like wipes himself off. He gets a shirt that's been hanging over, uh, one of the benches, um, out there and he puts it, he buttons it back up on, puts back on his hat, shines his little sheriff sheriff badge and uh and takes you into the office and as uh, so sheriff, sir, i have a question yeah what's up uh what does it do and i'm pointing at the little sheriff star 
Um, oh, well, <laughs> this is just a, a badge that represents my dedication. Um, and yeah, 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 but I, I mean, what does it do? Uh, does it uh, fire things? Or, or maybe you can open it and oh. then it, it's like a skeleton key? No, 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 or, nothing like or, that. Maybe it can deploy and... As, as PHG rambles, um, yeah, I will just walk up behind her, uh, them and, you know, not even, even quite touching, just hovering the hand behind their back so they notice uh, and, you know, kind of signaling them to slow down. The poor sheriff can't keep up because he's not used to this pace. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm sorry, Mr. Sheriff, sir. No, 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 it's fine. You all, you're all good folk. You seem like really nice people. Um, uh, but no, it's just a, it's just a badge. Can't blow anything up with it. Uh, it's just here to remind yeah. people uh, that I, I'm their servant and uh, I'm, I, I do the best that I can every day to earn their respect. Um, so, anyways, uh, shall we? And uh, he, he leads you into his office. Um, inside the office, he, he gets a little bit more serious with you, and uh, it seems like he's really worried. Um, he shuts the door, and... Um, does, he, does he shut the, the window, too? No, 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 he keeps the window open. <laughs> keeps the window open in the back. Yeah, b because, you know... That, that's to, how to make sure that nobody hears. Close the door inside and open the windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think he assumes that uh, you all would notice if there was anybody out in the back. Well, at least I hope. There um, is an unfallen and a craver sitting right beside the window. I think nobody with an ounce of survival instinct would come close. Yeah. So, and so you would. <laughs> of course I would. <laughs> the uh, the sheriff's office is sorry. The sheriff's um, building um, is is relatively next to the the wall, so it kind of backs up against the outer wall of the city. So you don't expect very many people to be out there. Um, you kind of would would only expect people to be out there if they were on police business um, or something like that. Um, not that they have like an organized police force. It seems to be fairly ragtag. Um, so, anyways, he takes you in the office. He shuts the door. I think he lowers the blinds um and he, and he looks over at you and he says something's not right here in dundon <sighs> i've felt it for a while now but uh but it's only been very recently that uh things are starting to get really bad um i've always i've always felt uh like it's been my duty to protect the people here in the city and uh and recently um <clears throat> well we have a lot of creatures here on on Sahar. Most of them are pretty tame, um, but you know it's a it's a pretty dry planet. There's not too much to eat, and most of the creatures don't get very big. But uh, but lately, um, we have wild boars here, and uh, and these boars that we've been seeing recently are not like the boars that you see normally. These boars are twice the size, at least. And they have big tusks. How big is that? He holds up his hands like this. And he just, he's just like, I don't know. <laughs> you you want to come out and see them? Uh, you probably, you, you know, sure. It, when, when she asks and, uh, and the sheriff tries to communicate, I'm going to, you know, think for a moment and say, yeah, twice the size, the normal. Uh, addressing the the sheriff mm -hmm. and yeah you know, and, They're ginormous and, uh, yeah that's that's probably getting close to the size of our four-armed colleague those normal boars are already really big yeah i mean mm. i don't i don't know if they're as big as uh old forearms out there but uh you know it's uh oof, they're massive and <clears throat> let's just say they're not to be messed with uh, these boars, like I said, they have tusks the size of your forearm, and uh, whom's? Uh, I mean, my forearms are are, are their forearms pointing at my, the window. My forearm. Let's let's be let's be clear here. We're, I'm talking about me. Twice, you know, twice the size of our boars. The big is my forearm. I know you all are, you know, very different uh, than us here, but um, uh, but uh, but yeah, these these boars are not to be messed with. And something weird um, about them is that 
when you look them deep in their eyes, it's almost as if there's a, a yellow glow, almost burning within their eyes, almost like they're not even there. Wild animals don't just come and destroy things willy-nilly, but these ones seem to have a passion for destruction. And I'm breaking up at passion for destruction. He like, sees, huh? he sees is, is look he on your face and he's, and he's like, no, 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 the, this isn't explosions. Um, we're talking about real destruction here, destroying people's families, homes. Fr frankly, with more like that, the explosions might be necessary. Well, really? that's what I'm wondering if you can help me with. Um, I, I unfortunately had to bury two of my good um, compatriots here. Uh, last night, as uh, as I'm sure you heard, there was an attack, and these boars have been coming and destroying our farms, trampling them, and uh, you know, come winter time, we're gonna have a hard time surviving if we don't figure something out. Um, I am willing to do what I can to help you all out. Um, if you can help me out, um, these boars seem to come during the night and uh and i'd be willing to help you all out and whatever it is you need to do um i may be even willing to uh to give you one of my weapons that i've made um if that's something that you all are interested in depends on the blast radius to know if i'm interested in it how big well, I can't, I can't uh, speak to the uh, explosive nature of these, uh, these here firearms, but they're pretty good at a distance. I'd say that they, uh, they rival any of the, the weaponry that y'all probably gonna have from, uh, from your travels. We make them, we make them homemade and we make them good here. Um, so, I'd be more than happy to hook you up with one of those as long as you can help me out. We really have, we really I have, uh, our work cut out for us. I have another question, sir, chef, sir. Uh, are the creatures edible to humans? Uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah, if you can catch them. <laughs> uh, I mean, around Christmas time, normally we, uh, we hunt the boars and, uh, have a nice roast pig, uh, for Christmas. But, uh, but, um, these, these big boars, uh, they're not like the other ones. I don't know if they would taste good even, um, what with how much they, uh, So we have to find one? to try and test it for science, right? <laughs> I mean, heck, if you kill it, you can cook it up. Be my guest. Nice! So will you help me? Th throughout that um, whole conversation, Rabia was getting a bit more tense, especially when he mentions that, you know, he lost two people because she feels really bad about misjudging the situation and thinking, you know, oh, they, you know, they've got it handled, which clearly they didn't if... How many? They, you had said there were like five people there uh, last night. You saw like that? some more than two. You saw two to two to four, I think. Yeah, but the point is, even if it was five people, that would be forty percent of the defenders dead. Uh, so, not a good feeling for her that she misjudged it. But at the same time, uh, she's feeling more favorable towards the sheriff uh, with uh, how much he's seems to be viewing himself as protector of the town as opposed to some other uh, imperial law enforcers she's had to deal with before yeah so and she's definitely in favor of helping but she's not saying anything yet she's waiting well, well i guess for three of the others to react because i i'm guessing that you know there's explosions involved so our little sophon is on board <laughs> I mean, Rith at the mention at the talk of potentially eating the boars is probably sitting there like tapping all their fingers together. So, is that a yes? Here, Vito. She will pointedly look at, you know, Vito and uh, Alabraxa. So, Vito kind of uh, is interested in what the ring had. So he's thinking that maybe he can claim back the favor as, I don't know, helping them out to get to the ruins because there might be some 
other issues that they don't know yet. They only know that there is an old man kind of weird living there. So he, he accepts the game in the future. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so the plan is tomorrow night, we need to get ready, first of all. But tomorrow night, we're going to get together. We're going to prepare Mr. ourselves. Mr. Sheriff, sir? Yes, uh, yes. I have a question. So you said no mines, but... Uh... Well, 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 I said no mines around the city. <laughs> Don't get me wrong here. <laughs> if we're going to be fighting those boars, we're going to need every mine you got. I love you. Yeah, well, hey. hey. Not to love, 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 but, but uh, I like you. I mean, hey, uh, I love you too. Thanks for helping. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, it's not going to be easy, but I think that with your help, we can do really good for this city and uh, we can protect a lot of people. Um, so if you're willing, come nighttime, let's go out there, let's give them hell. Um, and, and the sheriff kind of gives a, a, knowing, a knowing look uh, at, uh, at you, Rabaya. Um, it hasn't been said, but uh, the sheriff is a pil pilgrim as well. And uh, <clears throat> I think that there maybe is some sort of kindred spirit there. Um, that that he feels um, a, a mutual loathing of the people that don't give them enough funding for defense. <laughs> maybe and they definitely have had some hard times here on Sahar, and uh, it seems like the sheriff is almost run down um, with how hard they've been trying to protect the people, and uh, and they're very appreciative um, for the help. Yeah, she'll she'll give him a a quick nod and then say, yeah, if. There's nothing else to discuss. I think we might best start planning and preparing. Yes. Just, just have a last question for you, Sheriff. Did you ever see the mayor one time in your life? The mayor? Oh yeah. Um, he doesn't come around a lot, especially not these days. Uh, it seems like as of late, he's uh, he's taken more of a hands-off approach to running the city. Which, I mean, I don't judge, but uh, it's not what Maybe I would do. Maybe I just rolls her eyes at that. <laughs> Maybe. Could, could you describe him? As if, we meet, if we meet him in the city, we'd like to, to ask him some questions, but we need to know how, it look, how he looks. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, well, the sheriff uh, is kind of a taller man, uh, a bit imposing, really. Um, honestly, wears a lot of black, interestingly enough. Um, but honestly, I mean, he looks, he looks about like, about like anybody else, you know? Um, it's not super interesting in any way. Um, but I think you're going to have a hard time finding him. Most of the time, uh, he's holed up inside of his, uh, his estate. Um, I don't know if you all have been around the whole city yet. I don't know if you've taken a little tour. Um, but, uh, we're on the west side of the, the city here, and, uh, old mayor, all the way over on the east side of the city. Um, you'll notice kind of like a city park over there. His estate almost runs up right against the city park, and, uh, it's hard to tell where one starts and one, and the other one ends. Um, but they, they definitely have a lot of property out there and, uh, lots of trees, so, uh, Honestly, until you get right up next to it, you're probably not even going to even notice that it's his house. Um, so, uh, anyways, you're you're free to go we, over and try and contact him if you want. You can knock on his door. <laughs> we but, might uh, hard to say if he'll answer. Take a, take a look around the city, just um, as we're looking around. You said the the boars are usually coming from the north. The boars, yeah, they're coming out of the meadows. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know then, whether they then, have underground and maybe we'll we'll swing by there uh, on our little tour of the city to you know get the lay of the land i have to find where to put my mines i mean i wouldn't want to drop them anywhere they need somewhere nice cozy explosive all right sounds good uh well let's get prepared and uh let's give them hell all right yeah you just have to remember why you put them because if some doesn't explode you have to take them back to use it <laughs> later yeah. in another, maybe uh, in another way. W would you assume that I would abandon 
my babies? <laughs> no way! For what I know about you, uh, I don't think you'd ever leave your technology behind. You seem pretty attached to that little one on your shoulder. <laughs> Yay. Um, anyway, so the, sh the sheriff uh, starts getting stuff ready. He uh, opens up the door, lets you all out, lifts back up the blinds. Um, he obviously seems pretty suspicious about if anybody's been listening outside the door. He kind of gives a little peer around the corners. Um, it seems like there's things he hasn't told you yet. Um, suspicions that he might have. Um, but anyways, uh, you all leave, uh, the sheriff's office and, um, get ready for, uh, tonight. And, um, as you all are getting prepped, some of you maybe take some naps, anything like that. It's going to be a long night. Um, and as the sun goes down, uh, the sheriff... Well one one thing I meant to do, apart from, you know, actually looking around the town a bit to get the lay of the land, one thing Rabia will do is um, take Bieke and find a place somewhere further away that's, you know, a wide open space so they can put on some of the mines and then on a nearby rock or something, you know, beforehand put on some old cans, bottles, whatever, anything that they can use to try trigger the mines and then she will get her her coil gun which looks a bit like somebody stuck an apple product on the back of like an old m1 garand because it's like a combination of united empire and soft technology so it's like you know hybrid uh, weapon the, the 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 smooth curves of like the, those white panels of the soft tech or like where the the power plant for the gun where's the actual coil gun weapon is like the imperial technology which if you've seen the united empire intro is you know very utilitarian kind of bare black metal and just use this opportunity to make sure that everything's properly calibrated and, and sighted and like try to shoot the it, it cans and bottles me. into the mine to trigger it so we are sure that they actually work because man that would be bad if a i don't know 1,000 kilogram dust bore just charges straight past the mines. If you'll allow me, I would love to just take a look. Not modifying anything, not shooting at anything. Just taking a look, hands behind my back, at your weapon. Yes, uh, of course you can, can take a look and um, she will, you know, give it to you. And uh, you will actually notice that it actually already has been modified a bit. And it seems to be that Originally, it was a more advanced weapon with, you know, better uh, rapid fire capability, but that has been deliberately removed, apparently, and replaced with uh, more sturdy parts. Um, seems there had been some bad experiences with malfunctions before, as it wasn't exactly designed for, hey, I'm going three months away from civilization without any place for spare parts and anything. All right, so at least the two of you go out. Um, maybe everybody else comes to watch. Uh, and um, and you try out your weaponry. Every, maybe everybody gets a little bit of a, a little bit of a training period um, as you are tar doing a little bit of target practice. Um, maybe Rith is over there bonking some cactus um getting getting their arms ready um you know i i'm not trying to tell your story uh you can tell me what you all want to do but um um as we are reaching kind of the end of our time here now, now i'm imagining that somehow may, maybe maybe can manage uh, because it's not a father throws the cans towards the rith and rith just knocks them away and then i shoot them <laughs> <laughs> it's a team effort as you all prepare yourselves and get uh, warmed up for the night ahead. Um, and as the sun starts to fade, you all bring your things back in. Um, I'm going to say that uh, through the... I would have taken a nap. Okay. Just in case, so I don't sleep when my minds are alone outside. All right. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to say that... Uh, through the help that you uh, did for the sheriff and uh, the practicing and things that you have all done outside, 
um, that you gain a certain amount of experience um, and uh, and you are enlightened. Um, I think before we end it, um, you all get together, you meet up with the sheriff and you start heading outside of the city. Um, people are boarding up their, sorry, closing their doors, shutting their windows. And, uh, and it seems like word has gotten out that you all are getting involved in the city's affairs. Um, that you all are maybe trying to help. And some people seem to give you knowing looks, almost looks of encouragement as they see you leaving the city because this might be uh, the last time they see you. Um, so anyways, as you head out of the city and you go into the meadows, you all set up um, your defenses. And at this point, um, I guess we would roll for initiative. Um, which, which I guess is next week because it is 8 p.m. <laughs> we will we will roll for initiative and at the start of next stream next Monday same time 5:30 uh, we will see how the battle of the boar uh, goes and um, and you, our you, you missed the you missed the historical pun there because there's something called the boar wars or the battle of the bulge. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> yes. So next time. Uh, on Endless D&D, we will have to see um, how it goes as our adventurers um, fight off the the boars that are um, seem to have something different about them. They seem to be more aggressive. They seem something's wrong. Um, so we'll have to see where that goes next week. So thank you all very much for being here. Have a fantastic week. Um, and we will see you next time on Endless D&D. Have a fantastic day.